as a body are called to go and serve as well. So keep that in mind. The other thing I want to point out before we call the witnesses to, uh, to share with us is you may have noticed we have knitters up knitting as we speak. This is one of the longest running missions of the church. There's caps up here. Just by show of hands, how many have either, either received a cap or even worn a cap as a baby that was knitted by the knitters here? Raise your hand. Yeah. Not me, but both of my kids. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Over 72,000 baby caps have been knitted by our knitters over the years here at Epworth. Yes. 72,000, and I did say over 72,000 have been knitted uh, and have adorned the heads of babies to remind them that they are loved and that they are cared for. That is kind of like a, the, an underdog, behind the scenes type of mission uh, because they may, may never meet the knitter, uh, but they'll know that someone loved them and that it was with uh, the love from a church and from Christian people and God's love for them which is really, really cool. So keep that in mind. Sit back, be ready. We got some awesome witnesses to share, Mike. So after talking about the knitters, the next mission uh, we wanted to highlight was, um, Epworth has been sponsoring missionaries to other countries for years. Um, and currently, Epworth is sponsoring one of our own, um, Anna Glenn, who uh, we grew up in this church along with her Nathan husband, are both in Liberia doing missionary work, uh, focusing on sustainable agriculture, among other things. Um, they are back in Liberia. They were here during the summer. But we thought, since we're doing Mission Sunday right now, let's see if we can, if we can talk to them. And we're going to bring them up right now and talk to them. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey. <laughs> so um, what's the weather like right now? It's pretty cool right now. It's like in the 70s. 70s? OK, good. In England. All right, cool. So um, for those who uh, may not be familiar with what, what, why you're actually out there, can you give a recap? What, what have you been doing in Liberia so far? What is your, what is your mission? What is your calling? Yeah, so um, Liberia is one of the poorest countries in the world. And so there's a lot of people here who are living in poverty, especially in terms of having enough access to food. Um, additionally, there's a lot of people who know the name of Christ and, but yet don't have um, relationship with Christ. And so we are here in order to um, teach agriculture because that's one of the big passions that God has laid on both of our hearts so that people can grow more food to support themselves and their families and their communities and also to share what it is to walk with Christ and have a relationship with Christ. And so that's been a big part of um, why we're here and what we've been doing since we've been back <laughs> yes, yeah, since since we've been back, uh, it's sort of been a whirlwind. Uh, we're we're sort of getting acclimated back to the um, the weather, the way we have to transport ourselves, the um, the culture, the food, and all sorts of things. And um, and and so uh, we uh, we've gotten we've gotten back here, we've gotten back into the swing of things. And uh, at the uh, Agriculture Research Center at uh, Liberia International Christian College, and. Um, we're sort of off and running now. Um, so Yeah, I guess we're just starting the semester now. So I just signed up about 60 kids in the agriculture department to, uh, who are doing their bachelor's degrees. Um, so that's been pretty cool. Been keeping me busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and we wake up um, every morning. And this will be something that I've uh, talked to many of you guys about before. But we wake up every morning. We have time with God for ourselves. Um, but then we're able to um, get into uh, God's word um, with everybody that uh, we work with, our team here um, at the Agriculture Research Center, the ARC. Uh, we've just finished, so they were going through Matthew, the book of Matthew, while we were there with you in the States, and they just finished that, and now we've um, moved on to Romans. And, uh, and that was... Um, so we sort of put it out there, like, what do you guys want? What do you guys want to do next? And and, um, and so they uh, chose Romans, and that's what we're going through. And uh, it's really cool because they're starting to something that was started by um, us, uh, the missionary team, is is starting to become taken over by them. 
and uh, uh, they have uh, ownership of it. And we've seen a lot of our um, young men and our uh, uh, the, the, the older men and women that we uh, work with start to um, lead us in Bible study every day, and we uh, open that up for them uh, so that they can, uh, they can talk about what they're seeing in the Word um, and, and have that chance for inquiry and discussion. And, and, um, and so we're sort of sitting beside them just talking about what God's revealing to us, and that's, that's really cool. How's the chocolate production going? It's an important question we all want to know. It's, it's still going. We um, recently got some more machines um, from the U.S. that were sent. It took a couple months to get here, but they're here, and so we're able to now double the amount of production we were doing before. Um, it kept going while we were gone, so there's been tons of chocolate made. We just need to get it to Monrovia and have it sold there. So it's been pretty cool to work with the students in that respect and also be able to, it's not just a physical aspect of making chocolate, but it's a spiritual aspect as well, what it means to bring Christ into business, what it means to bring Christ into leadership and into our ordinary daily lives. So that's been a cool thing for me, especially because I get to eat chocolate too. That's awesome. <laughs> So Anna, you had sent me a picture of the uh, the compound uh, where you're at. Um, we could get up on the screen, but you could tell us more about what we're seeing there, the, the building in the middle and everything around it? Yeah, so that big building you see in the mid middle is actually where we're sitting right now. That's the Agriculture Research Center. So it has the classrooms on the first floor, and then on the second floor, we have a little room up here. This is the porch. Um, of that building and then there's like dormitories for when mission teams come or when we do agriculture trainings and we have to host people and then all around that building you'll see various um, structures and those are that's all of our agricultural farms so we've got pigs that we're doing research on ducks chickens tilapia um, I don't know if you can hear our pigs right now they just squeal <laughs> um, we've got turkeys we've got um, vegetables, all kinds of things in the fields out there as well. So Anna and Nathan, um, just what can we be doing now to support you and what you're doing while you're there? Well, when, uh, um, when we were home, we uh, um, felt your guys' support and encouragement. Um, just from the relationship that we have and so uh, continuing that relationship anybody wants to reach out to us and um, Make a little comment on something they read on the newsletter or um, Or even email us with something more thorough that you want to talk to us about we're, we're uh, it, It's uh, it's something that really helps us to be encouraged um, and feel supported because of the relationships that we that we have um, yeah, I think we're, you know, being over here, we're so far away, it can feel really easy to forget about that whole <coughs> giant family that we have on the other side of the world. So the more that we get to talk with you guys and engage with you guys, and I love this here too, where I can see everybody in the, <laughs> in the church. I mean, that's just awesome. And just when people um, reach out and remind us that you're a part of this um, ministry with us, you're praying for the people that we are working with, those are huge, huge encouragements to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and who knows, maybe in the future we'll see some Epworth members uh, right here in the, in the ark. We would love that. That would be awesome. That would, that would be awesome, yeah. Anything else? No, I, I think that's good. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day uh, and sharing with us. And we love the technology of being able to do this. This is very cool. So thank you. Everybody thank say you. bye. bye. <laughs> Yeah, you can see everybody from up here. Oh, yeah. They, they see, see you in that here, camera so up there. With them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Excellent. Right. Very cool. Isn't that cool? And the technology is another mission aspect of the church. It's something that we do that uh, helps us to be able to share the story, to share the witness, and be able to use for others in the church. So that's a big thing that Mike's a part of as well. One of the other missions we wanted to celebrate uh, this morning and give an opportunity to share, uh, Epworth is one of 14 founding churches of a ministry in the area called UCAN, which is United Church Assistance Network. 
Um, and we happen to have Barb Jones, who is Miss UCAN herself. And I'd like to invite her to come and share just a little bit with you about UCAN and what it does and why we support it. So Barb. Do you want a handheld or do you want to go up there? Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, UCAM was started in 1996 by Sister Rose Lindner. She gathered various churches within the northern Baltimore County and pooled the money together to help clients in the area. On any given month, we see between 80 and 100 people. I myself work usually on Mondays, and I wanted to share with you a few of the people that I see. Usually during the week, I see a homeless man who's been homeless for 15 years that comes in for a homeless food bag supplied by the Cockeysville Food Pantry and a food card. Now, he's perfectly content with being homeless and sometimes I give him tokens to go down to Prologue, which is an organization that allows him to wash his clothes and to take a shower. We also see people that need gasoline that, uh, to go to their jobs, or I saw an elderly man that usually comes once a month for gas because he has many ailments and he needs gas to go to, to various doctors and once in a while he'll need a script for prescriptions. The biggest and the largest amount of money that we spend is on evictions. One lady came here and I accompanied her because she had found a better job, she had gone to college, and so she had this opportunity to start a new job the following Monday. However, she was facing an eviction. So she had four children, and she didn't know what to do. So that's when UCAN networked, brought her here, so the pastor could hear her story and to help her. Then she said, well, I'm in management, and I don't have the clothing to support my new job. So lo and behold, Thrifty Penny opened its doors and helped her with clothing that, of no cost. Another lady came in, and I happened to be there at the time. She had come from the hospital, and she had four, six stints from the hospital. And she was on sick leave, she had worked full time, only to come home to find out the following week she was facing an eviction. And she didn't have any funds towards the eviction because her worker's comp pay had not come through. Another lady came in just this past month who told me, my BGE has been cut off for a couple months. She said, but I've been paying my rent, I'm in home health services, and my client passed away and I was waiting for a new assignment. She said, but my rent is paid for, but they're going to evict me because my BGE bill has, has not been paid. So these are cases that UCAN has a guideline, and so many times we help as much as we can, but we network with other organizations to help people stay in their homes and survive, and most all of the 80 to 100 people that I see are working people. They are not on Section 8, they are working one to two jobs, and we try to help them sustain themselves and continue in life. So, you know, I would say that UCAN has helped any number of people throughout the years, and 
Sister Rose Lindner, like I said, who started this organization, is very proud of you, Ken, because we've been so successful. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. One of the other uh, ministries that Epworth helped to, uh, is a founding member of, is Baltimore County Christian War Camp. If you've served ever on Baltimore, Baltimore County Christian War Camp, raise your hand. Okay, if you look around the room, quite a few people have served as part of that. In fact, uh, Beth Waltrip, where is she? Okay, she's probably in the parlor. Hi, Beth. Uh, <laughs> so. Beth's mom is actually one of the founding members uh, that started the ministry of Baltimore County Christian Work Camp. And Mike's been a part of it uh, before, too. Here and there. Want to share yeah. yeah, here and there for several years. Um, it, it, one, of the, one of the reasons that we do that is because it is a local ministry. It's called Baltimore County Christian Work Camp. And so we're serving people in our community. And it, it's just like going on mission, the mission trips, we're helping people who who needs, who can't get into their houses, can't get out of their houses. Um, I mean, the, our Epworth has become expert on ramps. Um, we are known for our, build, our ramp building. Um, and that's because we serve so many people who, who are trapped in their houses because of some kind of ailment. They can't even get to the doctor. Or they, they're in their hospital, they can't get back into their house because they can't walk up steps anymore. Yeah. So that's been the biggest, the biggest reason I've contributed, at least here and there. So. Yeah. One of the things I felt very blessed by this year is I received the ramp award. Uh, and it wasn't because of how great our ramps are, and they are awesome, um, but it was because of myself and many of you that have helped to bring kids up through Baltimore County Christian Work Camp uh, that have learned skills and they've continued to use those skills to help others. Um, so for the years of service and contribution and how many people's lives we've touched, I know they gave it to me, but I feel like we as the church really received that award because that's really special. Uh, Anna, who you saw a little bit, bit ago, did Baltimore County Christian Work Camp and other mission trips along with other folks here from the church. So, you know, um, she went to be a missionary, others became teachers and other things, but they're using the skills that they learned to touch others' lives. But one of the things that's really important to us here at Epworth is that it's not just a youth thing, it's not just an adult thing. This is something we do collectively as a family. One of the things that we encourage here at Epworth is intergenerational mission. In other words, if you have a family that wants to serve, we want to give you an opportunity to serve. Um, this summer during Baltimore County Christian Work Camp, one of our families, the Beard family, uh, actually had three generations working out on the work site at the same time. And uh, I invited all of them, but I think they made Christina the spokesperson. So, so Christina, if you want to come and share a little bit. Do you want the microphone or do you want the stand? I think that was microphone. <laughs> Emma, stand with your mom. <laughs> yeah, Emma, come stand with your mom. <laughs> and your grandfather. Um, so this year was my first ever year being part of Baltimore County Christian Work Camp. Um, Emma went last year for the first time. Like As she has been growing up, she's been doing Girl Scouts and uh, when she became old enough to be able to do stuff with the youth, she was like, sign me up. Mom, I'm, I'm doing this, whether you can figure out how to get me there or not, I'm doing it. Um, so she got so much out of the mission trip last year and out of Baltimore County Christian Work Camp that I was like, you know what? I want to do it too. So um, just watching her grow and her faith grow and her wanting to serve, and she's always wanted to, but it just has grown over the past uh, couple years with her being in youth group. Um, so I couldn't go on the mission trip this year. I just couldn't make it work. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to do Baltimore County Christian Work Camp. I said to my boss, I'm doing this. People at work were teasing me because I'm a project manager at work. And they're like, you took vacation to project manage? Are you crazy? I'm like, well, yeah, a little bit. Um, but I like it. So 
it was just it was fun to be with the kids and to be with the family and meet them and um, hear their story, share our story. It was it was really moving for me. Um, and one of the things that I thought would be really cool is, hey, my dad's retired now. He <laughs> can come too. And um, you know, growing up, he kind of instilled in us about helping others and doing things for others. Um, he was on the trustees here at church, and there would be many a weekends and many a Friday night date that he and my mom would take to come walk through the church and replace light bulbs and exit signs or replace them and here climbing up ladders like a crazy person um, up on those ceilings. He still does if you ask him, but just please hold the ladder for him. <laughs> um, so he was like, oh, no, I don't think so. I have to pick up Kara from camp, because that was his job this summer. He was very serious about it, um, as he is about everything. So every day, I would go over to my parents' house to pick up Kara after camp, and after we were done with work camp. And he'd be like, so what'd you do today? So I'd tell him, oh, we were digging holes, and we were doing this, and whatever it was in Virginia. He's like, oh, like really interested in everything that we're doing. And uh, I'm like, do you want to come tomorrow? No, 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 I, I, I have this to do and blah, blah, blah. Like, OK, but you can come to breakfast, and I'll give you the address. No, 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 it's all right. I got to pick up Kara. Like, OK, but that's not till 3.30, so you got plenty of time. Uh, we could really use the help. And no, no, no. So finally, because his grandchildren are wrapped around his little finger. He'll do anything for them. Emma called him on Thursday morning and said, hey, granddad, you should come and help us. All right, what's the address? So he comes with his tool bucket that he keeps in the car, and he helped build a gate with um, Anna Glenn and Joelle. And just, it was nice to have all of us there to be able to spend time as a family. I told him to bring lunch, but he didn't because he doesn't listen. But. Um, Never, ever. But it was a really good experience. And being able to, um, I was sitting with Miss Mary, because uh, Mr. Dom left me in charge of her while he went to the, the doctor. I don't know why he picked me, but whatever. Um, I was like, OK, I'll go and sit with her. And we talked. And she was asking me who all the kids were, because she was so amazed that so many of our kids have such a heart for service and were out there working and how hard they worked and, and that they were having fun while they were doing it and they weren't complaining, they weren't being, you know, grouchy teenagers. And so I said, well, there's my daughter. And she's like, well, who's that guy? I've never, I haven't seen him all week. I was like, oh, that's my dad. And she was like, that's your dad? And he's here? All of you? And I said, yeah. And, and she was amazed. So that touched my heart, too, for her to be able to um, see that and see how many people really care. So it was a really good experience to be able to share that. And um, if you get the opportunity, even if it's just for a day or like a few hours, um, just come out and, and spend the time with us. It was, it's amazing. So while Baltimore County Christian War Camp is mission work that we do right here in Baltimore County, uh, we also take teams and go beyond our own community to serve. And this is where uh, Mike's leadership comes in. You want so to talk I'm about uh, currently a team leader for our mission trips that go out of state. Um, and last year, we've been going on mission trips for most of the last 20 years or so. Um, uh, la this past summer, we went to Burgall, North Carolina for the first time um, in the center of a county that was hit really hard by Hurricane Florence last year. 2,000 homes were flooded. Um, it's a five to 10 year project, and so more than likely we're going to go back several more times over those five to 10 years um, because there's going to be plenty of work to do and they need, they need to help. Um, but uh, in general, we do this because not only that there are people locally who need help, but people outside of here, including in a, in a hurricane flooded zone, they don't have the peop enough people locally to be able to get all that done because a lot of them are hit themselves. So it's especially important to, to, to bring people in from outside 
of that area, um, n no matter where it is. Um, we went to the Bahamas one year. We were, you know, it, they bring people in to, to help with things. Um, that's always been on my heart for years. I've been doing this since 2010, um, and that's always been a, a passion of mine and a calling. Um, so, but we have a few people to talk about the mission trips. We want to bring them up. Who's, yeah. who's first? So uh, a family that really touched our hearts and had been involved in uh, mission trips uh, for a while with us is the Manieri family uh, because they were the first three-generation family that came and served with us. Uh, so we have Susan is probably hiding back in the, hi Susan, so <laughs> she's probably back in the nursery. She may be able to come over, uh, but Miss Florence who's one of the knitters, and her daughter, uh, Rosalind, and Isaac. So if you guys want to come and just share real quick about that experience. I started going on mission trips when I was in like fifth grade. I think I went to New Mexico. And uh, it was great because that, that was the three generation one because I had like my cousin there, my, my grandmother, and my mom. Well, actually, and her. She kind of acts like, more like a mom for me. Uh, it was such a great time because even though we weren't there to help ourselves, we were also having fun doing it with each other. And like the sense of community there in New Mexico was like nothing I had ever seen before. Like everybody was very like welcoming towards each other and wanted to be your friend. And we all like just together, even if we weren't spending time with each other as much, if you were spending time with people there on the reservation in New Mexico, it was like the it was like a a dream scenario with like something that like and if I I would choose the New Mexico mission trip over any like sort of vacation with my family. Like it was so much fun. And it's not very often that she gets a, you know, cause, and cause she's my aunt, we don't see her all the time. I don't live with her. But spending that week with her and doing mission with her, like her and my cousin, they're so, I grew so much closer to them during that week more than anything else. And that's what I really gained from that is that the sense of family there really helped me out. Good morning, Epworth. Um, I'm Rosalind. I'm Florence's oldest daughter. Um, and I had the pleasure of being able to go on two mission trips with Epworth. Um, and that was something that's real important to me, but that wasn't offered at our church. Um, and um, I have a son who's 24. I, Florence has two grandchildren, Isaac and my son. Um, and we had the luxury of being able to go on that Bahamas mission trip first. Um, which was a wonderful opportunity for him to just, I, I always wanted to expose him to other peoples, other cultures, and to understand that um, how privileged we are um, and how, how we can, we have so much to offer people. Um, and one of the things that my mom always does when she prays at family events or whatever is to pray for others. Um, and to ask God to provide food for other people and to thank him for what we have, but to also provide for others. Um, and I've heard my son say similar prayers. So going on this mission trip together, the one to the Bahamas and we, were, we went to New Mexico as well, um, was, was my mom just living that example for us, setting that example for us. Um, and yes, we, we had the time together, but setting that example of taking care of others, um, sometimes the condition, it's not a vacation. <laughs> um, sometimes the conditions are not always what you would want them to be, and they're not luxurious, but you make do because you're there to serve. Um, so, so being able to see that multi-generationally was awesome, um, and I just loved the way the that Epworth um, invited us and took care of my son and I, who are not members of Epworth, 
and, and the youth of Epworth, Isaac was much younger then, but the older youth of Epworth just really embraced my son and just made him one of their own and he was really comfortable, which is not always easy when you're 10, 11, 12 years old. Um, so we thank you for that experience and we hope to be able to go out again. And my mother is strong. <laughs> physically and emotionally. Everyone tries to take care of her and say, Florence, Miss Florence, you have to sit down. Miss Florence, did you get some water? <laughs> um, but it, it, it's been a pleasure to, to be with her, and I hope we have more opportunities to do that. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I did maybe something good, and uh, when I'm not there, they will continue to do good for the others. Just the last couple things. One, one of the questions I get far too often is people will say, when we go on a mission trip away from close to home, why are you going there? There's lots of needs here. One of the things I'd love to be able to tell people is, well, here at my church, we go away and we do stuff here. We balance that work. Baltimore County Christian War Camp serves our neighbors in the community. Summer mission team goes beyond our community. But the ultimate thing that we're doing is not just serving, but we're building people with a heart for mission and serving and caring for God. The other thing I hope you notice today is it's not age specific. It wasn't just youth. It wasn't just young people. It's people of all ages going and serving. I had a gentleman in the church a month ago came up and heard about our missions and said, you know what, I'm too old to go out and do things anymore, but I have a whole bunch of tools. And the next Sunday he came to church with a bag of tools. There's a air compressed nailer, there's a drill, there's all sorts of stuff in here. And he said, I can't use them anymore, but maybe you can. That was a way of being able to help. Maybe it's contributing to the mission teams and helping with that. Maybe it's praying for them. Maybe it's feeding them. You know what? We like to eat. Um, there's many different ways that you can serve and be a part of the missions of the church. And we just shared a few. Down at uh, the potluck, you're going to hear about so many more of the missions that we do in the church and also opportunities for you to be a part. But here's the deal. God touches each and every one of us and invites us to serve and invites us to respond, invites us to be witnesses. God saying, whom shall I send? What will your response be? Amen. All right. And with that, please stand and join.